Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing another oscilloscope video. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, memory voltage regulation on a Gigabyte V550 Vision D-P motherboard. Um, in a couple different workloads, we're going to be running some Y-Cruncher, we're going to be running MemTest, and we're also going to be running IDA. Not because IDA is particularly stressful or anything, just because it looks cool. Like, it's the most intelligible uh, workload when it comes to what it produces on the oscilloscope. Um, but in terms of actual, like, stability testing value, I'd, I'd say Y-Cruncher is probably the best. Um, when it comes to at least causing, like, big transient loads on the memory power delivery, though Linpack actually achieves very similar things. Um, anyway, the setup here is that we're on a Gigabyte B550 Vision D-P board. Uh, I've got uh, G-Skill 3600CL14 XMP dual rank Samsung b die memory sticks installed, and as you can see, I have a piece of coax connected directly to the memory stick closest to the memory voltage uh, VRM. Right, so that's this regulator down here. Um, and yeah, so the coax is connected to that, that memory stick, um, to a capacitor on that memory stick that's for the memory voltage. Uh, there's a 50 ohm termination at the oscilloscope. Um, and then uh, on the back of the board, uh, I have another piece of coax that connects to a capacitor for the memory voltage right behind the CPU socket. Basically that capacitor, like the memory controller, runs off of the same voltage as the actual memory sticks, or at least partially runs off of the same voltage as the memory sticks. Um, and so I wanted to measure what the voltage regulation looks like at the memory controller and what it looks like on the memory stick, because uh, I figured there'd be a difference. Um, and you can very, like, you can already kind of see that with the two traces we have on the oscilloscope. The yellow one is from the memory controller, the uh, pink slash purple one, is from the memory stick. And at idle, we do have quite a lot of spikiness, which most of that is just Windows doing Windows things. Like anytime there, you know, anytime anything needs to get done, uh, the memory controller basically pulls in a bit more power. Uh, and I'd say it's probably the memory controller co uh, causing all of this, because if we zoom in on some of these spikes, um, let's do a single shot. We zoom in on this. Like, so what are we getting? So peak to peak over here. Well, actually you can just look at the minimum, right? The worst, the lowest minimum here, and we are in AC coupling mode right now for the oscilloscope. And the reason why I'm using AC coupling for this, whereas for like CPU V core, I usually use DC coupling is because the memory VRM doesn't have a load line. So we don't actually really care about the sort of absolute voltage level. It's perfectly fine to use AC coupling for this. Whereas with memory, like if you're doing core voltage measurements, you actually want to know what DC voltage level you're at. Um, whereas with memory voltage, like this is always going to be 1.65 volts. Like we're not changing the load line here. On average, this is always 1.65 volts. And the only thing we're really looking at is the deviation from that 1.65 volt average. Whereas with V core, you're not doing that. That's that's not usually what you're doing with vCore. Anyway, so looking at these two spikes, we can see on the at the memory controller, we're actually seeing lower minimum voltages than on the memory stick. And based on that, I would say that the transient starts at the memory controller because if it started at the memory stick, you'd see the lowest memory, like you'd see the lowest voltage at the memory stick, not at the memory controller. So basically, and that, that seems to be the case for most of the transients that I've managed to measure so far, is just like everything seems to start at the memory controller and then propagate to the memory stick. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so we just kind of have that at idle and, and that's just Windows doing Windows things and I need to check the time base. We're at two milliseconds, that's a bit too short still. Anyway, so we're just gonna run that and uh, now, I guess let's start with Ida, because Ida is kind of the most uh, clear to look at, whereas, well, the interesting thing about Memtest is, like, nothing really happens, whereas with uh, Y-Cruncher, you get uh, a mess, which is, of course, why Y-Cruncher makes for a good memory stability test, also why Linpack makes for a good memory stability test. Um, anyway, we're going to run the Ida memory benchmark, and what you'll notice is we get this, like, really regular pattern of spikes, um... And the cool thing about this is you can actually see that, you know, we have like the uh, memory goes under load and I hit the camera. 
Um, and interestingly enough, we do actually have a lower minimum voltage at the memory stick right now than at the memory controller. Um, and if we zoom out a bit, we scroll to over here. And I think the spike is probably going to be the most telling. In this case, maybe. I actually know it won't be, but anyway, um, yeah, and then we have like a load release spike over here. Um, and you can kind of see that the, the voltage level is actually slightly shifting around, right? Like this, um, like you can see that after each spike, the voltage, like all the yellow trace, it's slightly higher, slightly lower. So there is a bit of like load line-esque behavior, but it's not actually like, as far as I know, the voltage regulator on here doesn't support a V-droop function. So uh, it can't actually be load line. That's probably just an effect of how that voltage, like how that voltage regulator is uh, monitoring the output voltage that it lets the uh, voltage basically sag a little bit is just like, depending on where exactly in the power plane it's monitoring the output voltage, it's not gonna compensate for that slight uh, like the slight loss in power due to the power plane, right? Which is going to be most significant at the memory controller, which we can kind of see. Um, anyway, Ida is still running. And so you can see that Ida basically like cycles through different amounts of, like I'm, I'm guessing what it's doing is it's doing like a short read burst, longer read burst or write burst, whatever, right? And what's also interesting about this pattern is it explains why if you've ever run IDA on, on there's like specific motherboards that if you run IDA on them, you get very distinct coil whine for the different uh, tests in the IDA memory benchmark. And this pattern that we see like very clearly explains why that happens because it's very regular, right? Like if I run it again, you, you can see how like, so depending on the VRM design on the board, like, yeah, this, this would totally make um, for audible co coil wine, um, depending on the board. So, yeah. And the reason I point that out is like, that is a thing that I noticed, especially with Threadripper motherboards that you'd run IDA and you'd get this very specific noise from the board. It's like, oh yeah, that, this is why it happens. Though I'm not sure if it's generated by the memory VRM or the SOC VRM, but we can very clearly see that the, like, Ida has this very regular load cycle that, yeah, that this would evidently create a coil line if it, you know, ran in, ran on a VRM with the correct physical properties. Uh, that being, like, a loose uh, inductor or something. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so that's, that's Ida running on there, and I just thought that looks kind of interesting, and it's also very clear to see, like, load release and load insertion transients on that. Now, the interesting thing is you'd think something like memtest, right? A memory stress test would be very noisy, right? Because we're, we're loading up the memory, we, we should have a lot of transients. And funnily enough, you get the exact opposite. <laughs> nothing, like once memtest loads up fully, there is nothing. Like the spikes in the, like, you know, whenever the system's sitting idle, you see a lot of like upwards and downwards voltage spikes. Yeah, when it's running memtest, it's a straight line. Um, so yeah, which is rather interesting. I mean, we, we haven't even loaded up all of the threads yet. We're only at like 16 threads so far, and you can already see that like, all, like most of the spikiness is gone, right? Our peak to peak values are very, very low. Um, our memory peak to peak is still pretty high and I'm just gonna switch the trigger over to channel three. There we go. Okay, and now if we pull. I'm not gonna do anything right now. I guess I should have had Ida for, should have, re well, I should have noted down the Ida peak to peak values, but right now we're getting like max peak to peak at the memory controller is like 21 millivolts, right? And actually let's just reset that again. Okay, it's actually like 15. <laughs> okay, now it's, it's gone up a little bit. So yeah, like we have very low peak to peak at the memory controller and we're getting only like 33 millivolts peak to peak at the memory itself. If we zoom in onto the memory waveform a bunch, I think most of this is actually the voltage regulator. Um, Cause we're at what? We're at two microseconds per division. The voltage regulator on this board runs at uh, 300 kilohertz. I wanna say off the top of my head, so um, it's not 
Uh, okay. Let's do single. Um, so now we're at 5 milliseconds per division. That's... You know what? I am not going to try to do that right now. But I'm pretty sure if you counted this, this would work out to... Well, maybe if I zoom in on it. No, wrong channel. Channel 3. Also, Memtest is happily producing errors. But let's see if I can get a frequency measurement on that. 50 kilohertz. That seems wrong. Really? Oh, it's having a hell of a time triggering on that. Oh no, it is pretty much... Oh, come on. So while it's running, it's it's almost getting there. There's probably a bit of a... Um... Actually, I have an idea. What if we... Oops, I turned it off. What if I limit the bandwidth a bit? So that we reduce some of the like high frequency noise was my goal, but evidently didn't manage to really... Can I get that to trigger like... Yeah. No. Like, while it's running, it's getting kind of close to the correct frequency, and then as soon as I try to do a single, it just doesn't. Nah. Okay, if I mess with the trigger a bit, maybe I can get it to... Should be 300. Oh, wait. Confirm. Oops. And then... Nope, that's not the trigger, that's the horizontal again. Oh. Why is it locked on now? The frequency counter is still not doing a great job. So occasionally it gets the 300 kilohertz that I'd expect it to be. Yeah, admittedly, we're measuring off of the memory stick instead of, like, at the voltage regulator. So the thing is, like, a lot of the switching noise from the voltage regulator is not making it into the memory stick, right? Like, we're all the way down at, like, 5 millivolts per division at this point. And, uh, yeah, the, the scope is... It's not having a great time with this. Let's just put it that way. Um, so we're going to zoom right back out. I'm surprised that I managed to get it... To I guess it's doing a well, whatever. I'll turn off the bandwidth limit. I wanted to get that frequency measurement. Oh man, why is it so noisy now? Yeah, okay, I guess that's just not gonna work. Well, that sucks. Anyway, uh, wait, I put it to 50 millivolts per division. That's not what I was wanted to do. So we're gonna zoom out back to, you know, 10 milliseconds per division. Memtest has managed to get seven errors while running so far, um, which is fine. Like, again, this doesn't really affect the, the loading, but it is rather interesting. Also, the memory stick doesn't have a heat spreader. The room's kind of warm. There's no fan on that memory stick. And I'm running the memory at 1.65 volts right now to get it to pull more current. And so, yeah, Memtest is very upset about that. Um, but yeah, it's rather interesting that when you run Memtest, basically the memory pulls a pretty much fixed amount of current and most of the sort of noise that you see at least at the memory stick is actually from the voltage regulator on the motherboard. Um, and so at this point you might be thinking, oh, so you could like improve the memory overclocking performance by, you know, uh, improving the voltage regulation. Well, or maybe like adding capacitors directly to the memory stick because not much, like adding more capacitance to the board itself is just not going to be a, like, we're, we're trying to filter the memory's power supply, right? So we don't actually care if there's switching noise on the motherboard as long as it doesn't make it to the memory stick. But the thing is, what we're measuring right now with the oscilloscope, right, which we're at 100 megahertz bandwidth because I have the scope uh, unlocked to that. 
Um, we're measuring a maximum peak to peak of 36 millivolts, which basically means, l let's say you manage to re reduce that from 36 millivolts peak to peak to like 20 or something, right? You would maybe get like a 10 millivolt improvement in terms of voltage requirements for overclocking, which basically means not worth the effort, right? Like you, it, let's say you had an overclock that is just barely stable at 1.65 volts. If you improve the voltage regulation by another you know, 20 millivolts peak to peak, you would be removing like 10 millivolts of undershoot, hopefully. Um, not necessarily, but you you would hope that you would improve the undershoot by like 10 millivolts and the overshoot by like 10 millivolts and you would end up with a, you know, instead of needing 1.65 volts, theoretically you would only need 1.64. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's not worth the effort <laughs> as you can probably uh, see from this. So... Yeah, that, that's why a lot of motherboards... Now, admittedly, I do have more capacitance on this board because the the more transient tests that I've been running uh, show much showed much higher peak-to-peak -peak values, so I, I did mess around with reducing that. Probably a topic for another video. We're not going to cover that right here, right now. And anyway, I do find it rather interesting that when you run a memory stress test, it's just kind of like there, there's basically no... Like, there, there's not really much noise on the memory power delivery. Um, anyway, so we're going to stop the test. And as soon as you stop the p test, you start getting those, like, you know, bursts of load from, like, idling. Because when you're... Si and also just from, like, stopping all of the threads um, is what we're watching right now. So now that the system's idle, um, yeah, we, we don't, you know, get... Uh, well, actually, you can see as I move the mouse around, right, the, the OS needs to do things, and so that causes some loading. Um, but anyway, uh, now we're going to run Y-Cruncher, which is very, very noisy, and hopefully it won't crash after I just heated up the memory sticks. <laughs> Normally, I do Y-Cruncher before mem test, so I'm not sure how this is going to work out. And I mean for, like, normally when I was trying to, f like, figuring out how to do this video. Um, anyway, so let's run Y-Cruncher. And initially, not much happening, and then, then Y-Cruncher hits. And, uh, yeah. It is very noisy. Now, in the original configuration, the motherboard would actually end up with, like, 100 millivolts peak-to-peak -peak in Y-Cruncher. So this 70 millivolts, this, that's from my mod, like, the 74 millivolts maximum that we're getting right now, that's from my modifications. Um, not that I think it actually affects memory overclocking in any way, shape, or form, because, again, running mem tests, there's, like, no difference, um, between a stock B550 Vision and my modified version of the Vision, so, um, yeah, I, I have a sneaking suspicion it wouldn't have effective, uh, affected Y-Cruncher. Also, evidently, I did cook, like, overheat the memory sticks, because it just crashed to... I wonder if we could just put a fan on that, and if that'll be enough. I didn't want to have the fan on there because, you know, the scope probe is in the way, but let's see if I can get that in there. I'm going to wait for a little bit. Is it moving much air? Yeah, it's doing a decent job. Wait. Okay. I'm gonna... Wait, did I hit... Ro oh, no, it's just ready. And let's see if I can run the whole thing. Because there's, especially at the end, like, Y-Cruncher gets really noisy, which is kind of interesting because it generally doesn't crash towards the end. It crashes midway through the test, in my experience. Um, like, it crashes during this part, which is still very noisy. Um, so, yeah. Y-Cruncher, like, gives the memory power delivery kind of a workout in terms of being a really inconsistent workload, whereas Memtest seems to just pull a, I'd say probably a high amount of current, but it pulls it constantly. So it doesn't really stress, like, it doesn't really hammer the voltage regulation that much because you're basically, like, the, the voltage regulator just has to provide a fixed amount of current at the same voltage, and that's e relatively easy. Um... If this passes, that would be really cool as a, as a demonstration of how, like, small differences in memory cooling can make big differences to stability. 
And it wouldn't surprise me if it actually did, like, if the fan was enough to fix the, <laughs> fix the stability right now. Um, yeah, and then when you got to the spot check part of Y-Cruncher, it, it gets that, like, really noisy part right at the end. So, yeah, that ran just fine. Um, and, yeah, and I thought that was just kind of interesting that, like, um, and it's not just mem test. Like, I tried to, I, admittedly, I didn't try the entirety of test mem 5, but... Yeah, test number five, it's kind of the same thing. Like, it, it really doesn't seem to put a lot of, like, random load on the memory sticks. Though, maybe if I try a different test that runs through a few different configurations faster. I think this one does. Oh, we got something. I'm gonna reset the reset the monitoring. That still, ha I mean, it's only been running 29 seconds, and I do have the fan on the memory sticks now, so it might not catch any errors. I'm pretty sure test mem was just over. I mean, mem test was just overheating. Um. Okay, nope, this this looks very, very similar to Memtest. It's just kind of a fixed workload. And then change tests. Yeah, you can't even tell that it changed tests from the oscilloscope. Which is quite interesting to me. Like, I, I'm kind of... Like, one of the things I've been kind of wondering about is, like, maybe you could see an improvement in memory overclocking if the... Like, because in certain scenarios, you can have memory controllers that, like, if the voltage is too high, they get upset, that kind of thing. So, slightly, like, reducing the peak-to-peak -peak might improve, like, high voltage tolerance in those kind of scenarios, maybe. But, um, I've not tested that. Um... I don't know that I'm, I am going to test that. It's just kind of something like, because the thing is, is just like, like, I don't know, like, I don't think it'll be that much of a difference. Um, I do want to test some other motherboards just for, for comparison's sake, because Gigabyte does have the sort of most basic memory power delivery out of all m m manufacturers for DDR4. Um, it real like it, it's literally just a rich tech 8120 voltage uh like single phase voltage controller and three mosfets um which should be plenty I, which should be plenty but like a lot of other manufacturers like there's quite a few asus boards that i think run a two phase memory vrm i don't know if that ac actually achieves anything it might not um there's a lot of asrock boards that are single phase but bit f fancier than what like gigabyte is doing I, again i don't know if it does anything so i'll try try measure one of those maybe i and like the the thing is like if i he, here's the problem with doing these kinds of like comparisons a lot of the time you you measure a bunch of different things and find out they all perform roughly the same which makes for very boring content very boring data gathering as well Right, like it's not exciting to to go into a into a test going like, yeah, these probably all perform the same. Then spending you know a couple hours taking measurements and getting the conclusion, yep, these all do perform exactly the same. Anyway, test mem five uh, also just kind of doesn't put a lot of transient loading on the memory power delivery, which is quite inter. Which yeah, I, I just find that very interesting that all of the memory stress tests basically, like, if the memory system was sensitive to voltage, like, like it should be sensitive to voltage regulation. I'm, I'm not entirely. But like the the thing, the thing I'm trying to sort of explain to myself is like, how is it that like Y Cruncher doesn't have higher memory voltage requirements than than the various memory stress tests? Right? Like, usually if you crash in Y-Cruncher, the first thing you point your finger at is memory controller. The memory controller is not doing a good enough job if you crash in Y-Cruncher. But usually we're referring to voltage, like on Intel you'd be referring to system agent voltage or VCCIO. Not really VCCIO. Usually it would be like system agent voltage on Intel on uh, or vCore even. 
uh, on AMD, you're normally going to be blaming like the VDDG voltages and the SOC voltage. You're not going to be going like, oh, I crashed in Y-Cruncher, I need to raise my memory voltage. Like nobody does that. That's what you do if you crash in mem test. So, or test mem five or one of the other memory stress tests. So I am very sort of, you know, like I'm sitting here with, with these measurements and it's like, okay, so Y-Cruncher is very noisy. And yet it doesn't seem to be, like, heavily affected uh, by, like, the, the voltage regulation, which is interesting. Like, it doesn't seem to have a higher voltage requirement than just your generic memory stress test. Even though the generic memory stress test kind of just, like, they don't load cycle, like, at all, as far as I can tell. Um, so, yeah, I, I find that very interesting. And same goes for Linpack. Uh, Linpack looks extremely similar to Y-Cruncher on the oscilloscope, and also it doesn't really, like, it, like in my experience, I've never had to raise the memory voltage specifically for Linpack. Um, though maybe I should try that. Maybe sometimes when I'm having, like, Linpack, like, st stab problems stabilizing Linpack, maybe instead of, like, messing with system agent or something, I should just raise the memory voltage. Uh, maybe that would actually work. And, and if it does, then here, here's how I found out that's worth doing. Though, interestingly enough, um, and I should have should have pointed this out while I was running te uh, HCMM test. So what, like, this is a very rare occurrence, but I have run into this, is that sometimes if you run a mem test, you don't crash running the test. You crash when you press the stop button on it, which is very interesting. I've run into that, I think, once or twice. It's rather rare. Um, but I guess the, like, like, because here's the thing, like, once it loads up, right, it doesn't really pull a, or, no, it pulls a lot of current, relatively speaking, from memory. Um, but it pulls it constantly, right? There's, there's no variation to the level of load. Um, but when you hit the stop button, I wonder if that just triggers a massive spike, right, as you hit the stop button. We could probably try that. Um, so we're going to set that to single. Actually, I'm going to bring that in a bit. There we go. And I hit stop. And I didn't have that low enough, did I? Yeah, that was probably... Oh, wait, I'm still on channel three. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. There we go. Put it on channel one. Now it would have been in the right area. Anyway, we're going to start the test. I'm going to put it like 30 millivolts. It should be high enough that it doesn't catch any of those sort of like Windows uh, event timer transients. Um, yeah, we don't actually need it to be running all 32 threads. Like the memory controller saturates pretty early. Um, as in, like, the, the, there's a limit to how much data can be shoved out of, in and out of the memory at 3,800 megabits per second, and one, once you hit that point, like, the power consumption's not gonna increase, because, like, <laughs> the memory's already working as hard as it can. It can't work, like, therefore it cannot work harder, and it certainly can't pull more current. So, anyway, we're at that point right now. So I'm gonna bring that trigger in. Set it to single, and now I am going to hit the stop button. And maybe I should have zoomed out. There was quite a delay on that. Um, yeah, so you can see how like stopping mem test triggers just a very a mess. It triggers a mess is what it does. <laughs> just creates an absolute massive mess. Um, that as usual, it, like, it really seems to be from the memory controller more so than the memory, because the memory, we're only seeing 28 millivolts peak to peak here, whereas the memory controller is seeing 36. We keep zooming out. That, yeah, that stays consistent. Like, the memory controller consistently has a couple more millivolts of peak to peak compared to the memory. Um... Which I'd say, like, either there's a signi like a difference in how, how I've hooked things up. I don't think there should be. Um, and it would make a lot more sense to me that the, the memory controller is able to produce big transients rather than the memory. Because the thing is, the memory voltage rail, at least on Ryzen, is also used to run things like the uh, VDDP voltage. Um, 
which, yeah, like that voltage is derived off of VDDR. So we're measuring VDDR here. Um, and so the memory controller sh should actually be pulling, might actually be pulling more current than the memory sticks. Um, and certainly I think it's capable of like pull it, like transitioning from pulling a lot of current to less current to, you know, like going through a transient a lot faster than the memory sticks. At least that would make sense to me. I just, you know, mem memory is rather like slow and dumb compared to CPUs. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of it for this video. Um, and this video is 30 minutes long, which that, that's unexpected, though. I've come to the realization that my sense of time is absolutely terrible, so I shouldn't be that surprised. So, yeah, anyway, I thought this was just kind of interesting, and maybe I will test a bunch of other motherboards. Um, I might not bother with the memory. Like, the thing is, it is because right now I have the oscilloscope hooked up to the memory stick and the memory controller indirectly right back of cpu socket um but uh the thing is it's really convenient to just take that memory stick and just stick it into any motherboard and i can immediately take memory voltage measurements right because the memory stick just connects directly to the oscilloscope the way that the coax is attached to the motherboard however requires soldering a connection to the motherboard which just sucks to do so uh, if I'm going to be doing this testing, I might only be taking measurements off of the memory stick itself and not measurements off of, like, the, the board. Um, which I think, you know, like, that's, that's it. I think that's good enough. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Like, the other thing is, like, do I really care about having, like, a super in super good test methodology if ultimately nobody's going to care that much anyway. Also, like, I'm still pretty sure the results are going to be roughly the same across all of the boards, and then it's like, not, not only, like, sure, the test methodology is great, but, like, the results are the same, so it's just like, we have verified that things are the same with an extreme degree of, like, precision, I guess, which is just like, well, that's useful. <laughs> It's not like the thing, it's not like I've noticed like major overclocking, di like memory overclocking differences between the various boards. And actually the times I have noticed it, it isn't even like a voltage thing. Like, oh, this board needs more voltage. It's more like this board doesn't do whatever the other board does, regardless of what voltage you're at, because it has a signal. Like you have an actual like signal integrity problem, not like a power delivery problem, or you have like a, a termination configuration problem, which is ultimately a signal integrity problem coming from badly configured termination settings. But you know, like the, the, ah, hit the mic. It's basically the same thing in my opinion. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, I still thought this was kind of interesting to look at that like at least to me, the most interesting part is that it really seems that most of the big transients on the memory power delivery are from the CPU, not from the actual memory sticks. Um, and, uh, yeah. Also, Ida has a very, like, regular load pattern, which is kind of neat, and also explains why there's certain motherboards that coil line when you run Ida on them. Anyway, uh, that's it for the video, for real this time. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore, hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And then I also have a band camp where I post like industrial metal background noise type stuff. You might want to check that out if you want to support me. So... Yeah, there's links to all of that down in the description below. Um, and that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.